Elements and principles of design. They are the bread and butter of absolutely everything art related. Um, so you can employ or employ different ones, different combos. You can try and use all of them. Um, and in some way or another, all of them appear in one given art, uh, you could say. Uh, so to start out, the elements of design, we have color, value, line, shape, form, texture, and space. Uh, these are the more basic ones, the more, I'd kind of say, easily more important ones and definitely easier to identify and I'd say maybe use uh, compared to some principles. Uh, so basics, uh, color, well it's, you know, color you see, uh, red, blue, pink, purple, um, they can be split into different sections. So there's the primaries, which are your red, yellow, and blue. Then you have um, kind of the more tertiary or secondary colors, and those are what you mix from the primary. So orange, uh, violet, or purple, and then green. Uh, and then you have more a step down, uh, which is the three. Uh, so you get uh, like if you add a yellow to maybe a red, or a, sorry, not a yellow. Uh, if you have a blue and then you add it to a red, you get more of like a, or a violet, and then you add it to a red, excuse me. You get more of a red-violet, or if you add a uh, orange to a yellow, it would be a yellow-orange. Uh, that's basically color. You can also have warm and cool color. Warm colors are like your reds, orange, uh, yellow. Uh, and then your cools for the basics are blue, violet, usually, um, and green. Uh, the interesting thing, though, is each uh, color can be more cool or it can be more warm. So you can have a more warm red, like uh, the blush spots in the shirt on this. And then you can also have kind of a, a warmer purple. Uh, so I'd call this almost a bit of a warmer purple, or like the horns here on this character. Um, so that's color. Uh, value is probably the next most important thing, which will be the more in-depth topic of tonight. Uh, so value is just basically the lights and darks of a piece. Uh, how dark is something? How bright is something? Uh, what is the mood you're trying to set with it? Uh, so there's usually a scale we have. It's 1 through 10, 1 being the lightest, 10 being the darkest. Uh, and it's... Uh, Every color has its own inherent value, so for example, yellow is probably more around a 4, whereas a red or violet would be more around an 8 or 9, maybe perhaps a 7 occasionally, depending on how dark and dreary it is. Oh, uh, oh, sorry, yup. <laughs> I am great at this. Alright, let's share something. Alright. Yeah, that, cool. Uh, so now we're sharing. So again, uh, warmer reds, uh, kind of more of a warm purple, uh, for example, uh, pardon my lack of sharage. Uh, so uh, value, this is a very basic value scale. So you have like the super white, which would be a one, and then the super dark, which would be your 10. Um, and then you have your middle values, which are five. Uh, and there's actually a really fun practice. I will go through that once we hit the value section of it. Uh, but this is a good practice. Uh, most still lifes will actually start like this. Um, and then painting, it's good to get, uh, this is called a grisaille, a grisaille down. Uh, so if, especially if you're doing like oil painting, you could glaze over it. Uh, that's beside the point. All right, moving on. Line. Line is a very fun thing to play with. You can have implied line, which means it's there, but it's not It's not the cold, dark, heavy lines. Um, so like this is like a line, very strict, blocky uh, line. And then you can also have implied lines. So you can see how there's kind of a line between this guy's head and his next body segment. Uh, all these roses have implied line, opposed to the very heavy, uh, dark concreteness of this line. Um, you can have thick, thin, curvy, straight, pointy line stuff, you know. 
Uh, next up is shape. So you can have organic or inorganic. Uh, these are used, they are 2D, so any shape is 2D. Um, and shapes are created by closed lines. So um, for example, uh, this is a plastic bottle holder shape. You have a rose shape, you have a vine shape, a uh, chair shape. Uh, so pretty much all of these are shapes. Um, they're just all enclosed by what I'd say uh, would be implied lines. Um, and then organic versus inorganic is if you have a like a, a square or a triangle that's very uh, inorganic because it's just cut straight. Um, but organic lines are these nice flowy natural curves and all that nice juicy curvy bit this if that makes sense um moving on form is a lot like shape uh the only difference is it's 3d uh to put it simply uh so you can have it actually be 3d like a sculpture or you could have it uh like a i guess uh painting so here you could see you can almost kind of get the sense of the 3D-ness and the space of it, you can almost, I mean, it's not my best usage of it, but you can, you can tell they're roses and you could probably get a sense of like how far they pop out or how far they push back. Um, you could kind of probably tell that this, this background character is on a different plane than the, the human and you could probably get a sense for the, the uh, volume of the calf or how this is and all that um so yeah that that's pretty much form it's it's just like shape but 3d to put it simply uh texture it's the way something feels you can have a tactile texture which means you can actually like touch it and feel it or you can have an implied texture so um you can have the implied texture of a cloth or smoothness or bumpiness of styrofoam uh, smoothness of a flower. I don't really have many textured examples. Well, I actually have some. Uh, so if I switch my canvas here, here you can uh, kind of guess sense for all the textures here. So here you could probably get a sense of like a, a very uh, smooth porcelain surface since these are very straightforward. You could probably get um, whoops, a sense of like a papery texture here or a, a kind of smooth dappled looking thing like paper has. Uh, you could get a sense for kind of a scraggly, scratchy rope or wood. Um, so that's that's all texture. Uh, let me minimize that. Oh, go back to your windows. All right. Uh, so that's, that's texture. You can have real or implied uh, space. Uh, so space is probably one of the the hardest things to play within this. Uh, so space is essentially the distance between objects and objects create a sense of space, if that makes sense. Um, I could pull up a different painting that would probably exemplify this better, um, but here you get a sense that this is coming forward, the, the ramen cup's kind of in the middle, this guy's on, sitting on top of it, and then you have the back area. Um, that's probably a bad example, so let me actually open a different one. Um, this is a design project I did. Uh, probably also not that great of an example, but you could probably get a sense that the this area is closer to you, and then it kind of regresses back into this black hole kind of sense. Um, so also your objects can create a sense of space. Um, since these are in pretty okay perspective, you could probably get a sense that these are receding into the space as they go back. Um, spaces uh, also kind of plays into proportion a little bit. So if something's bigger or taller, you could probably get a sense that it's closer, where something farther away is a little bit further away or uh, not as clear or smaller, uh, that type of thing. Uh, so then getting into the principles of design, you have contrast, repetition, pattern, emphasis, balance, movement, rhythm, unity, 
And some people say scalar proportion is also a thing, but uh, it's not really. I'd say it's created more by space. Um, so you have contrast. Uh, so for example, everything here is kind of uh, gray. It's not very colorful, or if it is, it's kind of desaturated a little bit. You have this big, bright pop of color of the yellow form here, uh, which would, of course, draw your eye there. Uh, so contrast usually plays into emphasis because by adding a contrast, you draw the eye to that area. Um, so here, I mean, the only real contrast is the Raman cup. Uh, it's a very bright white compared to the blackness of the, sh the, the fabric behind it. Um, this doesn't really have a contrast. I mean, I guess you could say the contrast is the uh, warm uh, warm roses that are cool compared to kind of a warm green background. Uh, I don't know if I actually have a good good thing of contrast. Um, yeah. Uh, um, so that, that's contrast. Is it's you can use color, you can use value, you can use texture or shape um, to change something. Uh, so you, it's as long as something creates this this uh, something that stands out. Uh, to put it simply, uh, repetition repetition is essentially this, uh, which is why I have this example here. Uh, so by repeating the shapes in the way they are, you can infinitely combine these together and create a pattern. Uh, so repetition and pattern often go hand in hand. Um, pattern is uh, repeated shapes, lines, or colors. Uh, so this is essentially a pattern since it is meant to be a wallpaper. Um, there's that emphasis. Uh, again, emphasis is often created by, con or it is created by contrast. Uh, so it's something that draws your eye. So this would be the point of emphasis on this piece. Uh, perhaps this could be the point of emphasis since it's kind of radially attached to all of these. Uh, and it's a different, uh, it's more of a warm color compared to these cooler colors around it. Uh, next is balance. Uh, balance is another fun thing to play with. Uh, so you have essentially the weight of objects across the plane, the picture plane, or the, the piece you're working on. Uh, so balance, it's created by color, texture, size, um, detail of a thing. Um, you can have asymmetrical, symmetrical, or radial. Uh, so this is probably more radial than anything, because uh, this is a, the central point where you're drawn to, then it kind of radiates out. It's also asymmetrical because each side isn't exactly even, uh, but the balance is kind of there across the entire piece. Um, this is definitely asymmetrical because if you draw a line down the middle, this part has more weight uh, and draw than this side. Um, and you can play with that a lot. Uh, if I can maybe find another piece. Uh, so this was another one. This is just like a texture project. It's a horrible picture because it's shiny graphite. Um, but this is kind of radial. So you have like a point of emphasis here and it radiates out uh, that balance or the balance comes from a point of area. Um, this is also asymmetrical because uh, it's not in the middle. So if the if this part was here, uh, you could also have radial coming out. Or if this part uh, just had like parentheses around it on each side, that would be symmetrical. Um, symmetrical is often kind of shied away from because it can be very regimented seeming uh, since it is, I mean, the same on every side or different sides uh, if you're going for like a pattern kind of thing. Um, so asymmetry is often what's leaned towards or radial. Um, onto movement and rhythm, things in a piece that add a sense of movement. Uh, so like these little strands here at this, even the chair kind of pulls you through. Um, these vines I actually originally didn't have, but I added it in to try and draw the eye through each of these roses. So that creates a sense of movement. 
um, or kind of a sense of rhythm as you go through it. Um, these, uh, these blanket folds can be seen as kind of that, uh, since they are directional lines, uh, you get a sense for, I guess, going through the piece, uh, in a way. And that, that play, that can play a lot into composition, and it could make or break a composition for some things. Um, for example, if I pull up another project, this was a hand lettering project. Um, so I try to add in movement with this kind of film reel going through. You get movement from the scythe kind of coming in and then coming down, and then it, you're kind of pulled back up by this knife. Um, the vines, uh, you know, kind of move the eye through this piece a little bit. Um, again, probably not the best example. Uh, and then after that, it's Unity. Uh, Unity is a, it's kind of a hard thing to explain. Uh, it can be across an entire work of pieces, so if you have like an installation, uh, all those pieces can have kind of this thing that ties them all together. Uh, it can be just in one piece, so I used a uh, kind of very nice subtle rendering, I'd say, on the figure and this background figure to unify them. I used uh, the usage of colors uh, to unify these two together in the same piece. Um, past that, it's it's kind of hard to show unless I pull up my entire painting class, uh, which which I can do uh, if you would like. But uh, very brief unity uh, scale and proportion. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna just skip that because it's kind of not. Uh, all right. So getting into our value section, let me close some of these tabs. Um, things you can do to try and uh, get a sense for value. Uh, so something really fun to do is if I change this to be like 800 instead. Um, actually, let's not do that. Uh, so a fun exercise is called NOTAN practice. Uh, and that's one of the first things we actually did in my design class. Uh, and essentially what it is, I went over it a little bit last week. Uh, it's where you take a piece with very strong lighting and you break it down into uh, 1 through 4, then you have your 5 value, and then you have 6 through 10. And then you break it down into those basic parts. So for example, if I was doing that, uh, anything in red is a 10 or uh, that darker part so this would be uh, all 10 that would be 10 and you're, you just want to do these really fast uh, it helps you build an eye for getting uh, value down uh, so just doing it really quickly here you get that uh, if I fill it in uh, so something kind of like that and then you'd leave, uh, well actually it's 5 and up is left white, and then 10 and down, or uh, sorry, 6 and below, uh, you put in black. Uh, so, uh, for example, this would kind of be a notan practice, uh, and then you can still see it in its simplified form, but you get a sense for what it is. Uh, by removing all the detail from it. And it just helps get the very basics of it um, kind of in mind. So after you do a bunch of NOTAM practices, uh, what you can do is you can move into uh, kind of something like this. So I'm sorry if this looks very uh, overwhelming. Uh, it certainly was for me when I started it. Uh, so essentially what you want to do is, uh, let me actually go through my other example first. Uh, this one. Okay, so let's say you set up a still life. This is your still life. Uh, what you want to do is first you want to isolate the things you want to draw out. So in this case, it was these two vases. I did not want to do the pumpkin because screw that. Uh, I chose the skull and its stand and this back jawbone. Um, so after that, uh, essentially what you want to do is you want to crop it, uh, like mentally. You don't have to, you know, vote. Wrong thing. Shoot, wrong layer. Alright, 
So after you crop it, what you can do is uh, you start drawing out your shapes and figures. So uh, shapes and figures, you get on the thing. Bam, you got your base done. Congratulations, you finished your first step. Uh, so then after that, uh, if we take a look at this bottom work in progress sheet, what you want to do is you don't want to work immediately into detail uh, because you want to look at the big picture and what's going on with everything because value plays a big role in telling the volume of a shape, the texture of it, uh, and a lot of other things. So value is usually what you want to put down first. Uh, so you want to put in, uh, you want to look at things as they compare to each other. So if you just look at this section of the vase and then you look at the paper, you may say, hey, those are the same things, right? Because the color or the, the light shining on this too. Well, if you think about it, the paper would be more of a five. So just because a light shines on it doesn't mean that it's, it's immediately a one. Because remember, every color has its own inherent value. Um, and that's where the no-tan practice kind of comes a little bit in handy. Uh, now, most of these things are either brown or white or, you know, bony. <laughs> uh, but this, this is actually a really good starting point because if you omit using color, you have to then really sit and think about, well, what is this color relative to, say, the bone or was this color relative to this area right here or, or the paper? Um, so by isolating and kind of, I want to say, color dropping each, each thing to itself, you can then take that and then you can put it in your piece. And by doing that, it helps you quickly build these forms while also keeping the big picture in mind. Uh, and it helps you kind of better understand the piece and get the proper values to create proper forms, if that makes sense. Um, so th this is essentially what this is. Uh, so you want to put in, you, you usually want to find your whitest whites first and then your heaviest, darkest blacks. Um, and then usually you want to put those in first because uh, whitest whites, they're hard to get back once you get rid of them. So it's good to identify those first, and then the darkest darks you want to put in first, because the more you work the paper, the less it can take. Because uh, as you go in and smooth and blend and do all those things, it 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 uh, smoothens the grain of the paper. Uh, so for a basic basic thing, so paper, even though it looks like that to us, it secretly is kind of more like this. And so when you take your pencil and you draw all over it, what happens is the, the like little pigments, they get locked into these little teeth. Um, so that's why paper has different things like GSM and all that fancy wordage. Uh, so this is called the tooth. It's the roughness of the paper. It's uh, how often, how, how well it takes pigment. Uh, this is just simple drawing paper, which doesn't take it super well, but that's beside the point. All right, so after you get your basic values in, that's when you can actually start working back in, adding these bright highlights, more details. So like this is like the crease right here. Um, you get dark crease there. You get the dark crease and the line work of the teeth. Uh, you get the horns kind of figured out a little bit as you add in texture. Uh, so value kind of lends itself to texture as you go through. And then texture helps differentiate things from each other. Uh, so, like I said last week, this is a uh, kind of like a, a base, so it's very smooth and kind of perfect and uh, glossy uh, compared to this rough kind of beaten up, bony, spiky skull. Um, so it's important to differentiate these sort of things from each other. Uh, and so value essentially is your friend and it's good to become acquainted with value because in the end value can drastically change a piece. Um, so 
Uh, also, if you want to do something really difficult, uh, you can do a Notan. Uh, or Notan kind of lends itself into Gestalt, which is what this project was. Uh, so Gestalt is uh, two pictures come together or two different things come together to form a picture. That is a horrible explanation of it. But um, So for example, you can see the soda can uh, like plastic holder thing very clearly, but you also see uh, the form of a turtle or the shape of a turtle in the negative space. Uh, so that's always fun to play with. Positive negative space and shapes are really rough to play with, but uh, they're, they're pretty fun once you get them down. Um, so another example of value, uh, this is going the reverse way, so you add in the highlights since it is black paper. Uh, so you sketch out your basic forms, um, then you look. So I looked at this, I was like, well, this bottom part of the leaf is brighter than that part. So I added in the basic uh, kind of lay-in of that, that uh, highlight, um, and then I went back in, and then I added in... Uh, more highlights here and kind of work through it. Um, and, he, and the textures came after, so like these I added in right before I sprayed it uh, to fix fix it a bit. Um, and it's this is a very complicated thing because it is from a picture. And don't worry about getting photorealistic. Just worry about getting in those values, finding that form, and kind of going from there. Um, because you want to create a base work to work from, and you want to build those basic skills to further improve on your work as you move through your career. Yeah, so uh, for, for example, like the hair demo last week, or if I can find another piece that I worked on. Uh... Here, let me open this. Uh, yeah, so this piece, uh, this was done actually in Photoshop, so rip this Photoshop document. Uh, oh well. Uh, so this was rough to work with because I had a set background. Uh, so what I actually did was if I hide that, and I don't actually know what the layers are on this. All right, different example. That was, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, let me, uh, yes, this one. If it opens. Alright, so this piece I did back in December of last year. Uh, so if I hide that, hide, oh, I don't want to hide that. Uh, so essentially I, would, I knew I wanted a mountain sky, or a a snowy mountain sky. Uh, so what I did originally was this. All right. So we got the star layer. Uh, I kind of, I actually started with a thumbnail, which I don't have on me currently, sadly. Um, but if I hide all of these mountain layers, all right. So first thing first, Started with the, the gradient of the background. I knew I wanted the moon right here, so I put a kind of luminosity thing uh, there uh, to show that the moonlight was radiating, radiating out from it. Next, I added in stars, because who who doesn't have a night sky without, or, night yeah, night sky. All right, uh, next, the moon. I have a bunch of layers for that. Uh, so if you zoom in on, or if I zoom in on this, you can see I started with a circle, and then I kind of just built slowly. So that's luminosity. I add in small details, um, kind of roughing out the texture, uh, adding in more uh, kind of value, adding in some basic texture to it, uh, more texture, more texture. Oh my god. And then I finally get to more value. Uh, so I kind of worked reverse in digital, which, I mean, I guess it's you do you, since everyone does digital differently. Uh, so after that, I knew I wanted mountains. So what I did is I just went in uh, and I added mountains. Uh, 
So right now they have their fancy stuff on them. So if I strip them of all of that, uh, you essentially just have very basic shapes and they are ugly. I will tell you that. <laughs> um, so uh, this actually is kind of an atmospheric perspective thing. So this one is super up close. You're like right on top of it. And then this one's further back and then further back again. Uh, so you can see I just blocked in very basic kind of uh, shapes of them. Uh, and then you can see it just very basic value work, barely any, any, uh, any, barely any texture. Uh, and that's, that's usually what you want to do is you want to get the big picture down and then you want to work and in, work into those small details. Um, and then atmospheric perspective. So this one's dark and super detailed because it's right up in your face. This one isn't, uh, so it's a little bit lighter, and then it gets lighter as it moves back into that background. Um, so then this starts getting into a bit of detail work, uh, adding in snow, and then that final value layer if you need an additional one in digital. Uh, don't do that in traditional because traditional is not happy if you keep layering stuff on top. Um, again, so you get those patches and even some basic value in there. Uh, I'm horrible at doing snow. Uh, that's another uh, multiply layer on top. And then again another multiply which hides all that detail. Um, which is perfectly fine. Don't worry about getting all those little tiny details in, especially the further back you go. Smaller things get, the lighter they become, and then the less detail you have to deal with. <laughs> uh, so this back layer, I added in all these kind of ridges and stuff. Uh, then you get the snow, which hides all that kind of detail. And then uh, more of that. Uh, if we move into the character, I'm sorry if this is really boring. I don't really know how else to do this. Uh, so this is without the overlay. So the way I work in digital is um, I just block in colors. So if I if I just start hiding stuff randomly, uh, you'll see that each kind of thing is their own layer. That's just the way I like to work. Some people will say keep it all on one layer. Some people won't. Uh, so that's again another you do you. Uh, so if I put the body in and I don't know what else I hid. Oh boy. Uh, so if I put all this back, see, it's just very basic gradients, just to kind of differentiate uh, beneath uh, wings. Uh, yeah, to do wing studies if you're going to draw wings. But uh, you can see I differentiate each kind of feather from each other, just as a base. Um, also, if before you add in value, have a set like area the light's coming from, and that will make your life so much easier. So I knew this was behind, so I was like, eh, it'll probably shine on these, and the shadow will probably be on the downside of this. Um, so after I do that, if I hide this and open this, uh, so this is just moving into kind of that gradient stuff. Uh, so you add in your big overall value, so I knew, all right, the light's back here, it's shining uh, towards your butt, uh, to put it simply. So I erased uh, the areas that wouldn't have shadow kind of laying on them. So this part shadowed, shadowed. Uh, and then as I worked through it, uh, next I was like, all right, I need more shadow. So I added in kind of trying to differentiate the plane of her muzzle, uh, adding in some more detail to the wings a little bit, uh, adding more into the hair and stuff. Uh, then after that, I was like, all right, let's get some luminosity in here because oftentimes when you have a light source it's a good idea to use kind of a color from that light source to further push that is your light source on this specific area um and then i don't know what that layer is but that that's the basics of it um do you want another example i can go through another i have some i think around <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's working little or working basic outlines, adding in those washes of kind of value and then 
work again to the details after you're set and sure you have those values right. Um, we want to do something more simplistic with less layers. I don't actually. Oh, wait, hold on. I have to find it. It's somewhere. Alright, so a simpler example, which was before I entered art school, but I think it's still a good example. Uh, so we have Lori Lord layers. Alright, uh, so starting with the background, I wanted a portal kind of thing going on. So I was like, alright, let's get that portal in there. Then let's add some texture. That's a reference. Uh, then I was like, all right, I want these two characters. Uh, that's that's the so that's his sketch. Um, and I think this is the other sketch. So I sketched them in, and then I started the background, got the background done, uh, and then I started blocking in colors. Uh, so if I hide that, uh, Lord layers. Uh, so again, you can see each, like, his head and body are in different layers. Uh, a lot of stuff is on layers. <laughs> Alright, so that's the basic of them. So you have the body, you have the head, you have workings, uh, you have his weird head thingies, uh, which I absolutely hate drawing. I absolutely abhor having to draw this character even though I made him. Uh, and then I, I have all of his eyes. Alright, so that's that's basic. Basic, uh, so I got everything down. I have his shape set. I'm like, alright, I know what he is. I know where he is. I know what he's doing. Let's start adding value. So because I wanted the lighting again behind him, because I guess that's a thing I like, I darken his forehead, because as a form gets further away from your light source, the darker it gets. Um, so there's that. I add some highlights to his ears and part of his face, and then I just uh, add in a dark uh, kind of overlay to further push him into the background. Uh, and then I have another overlay layer, which I think is just red, to try and get the, the portal scene across. Uh, sketch. This is Figgy. Uh, so this one, I think, has less layers, because, nope, never mind. Alright, so you have the tail layer, you have his additional layers, you have the back ear, you have that. Um, marking, 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 uh, eyes. Uh, normally I wouldn't put this here, but since I wanted a red highlight on his hair, and since the portal is my light source, I just added it in. Uh, you can add them in as you please, too. Uh, so there's his hair highlights. Then I was like, all right, let's darken him. Let's let's really sell that atmosphere. So since this is the backlight source, and since uh, this is getting more into like uh, form and shape, uh, so since this area is closest uh, and it's rounded, uh, this section will get lit. And then as it recedes, this part gets darker as it's like the box muzzle gets back -ness. Yes, words. <laughs> uh, and then after that, just add in, add, added in another highlight to help sell the portal as the light source. Uh, so that's an example of using co the color of your light source in your piece. Um, and then again, uh, you can make it really successfully with just having like just a little bit of texture. So as you can see, his hair only has like one texture and he's he's rocking that, you know, even if you very have very little texture. Uh, and again, since he's closer, he has a lot more texture than this back guy did. Um, it's it's a common problem since we're very like everyone wants to do like photorealistic. Um, but don't well, don't worry about getting like all those textures in because I mean uh, Otherwise, you're just gonna sit here and you're gonna be like ah, oh, and that's a fur piece And that's a fur piece and that's a fur piece and then when you zoom out no one's gonna see it So don't tie yourself up doing these small tiny little details that won't be seen 
uh, cause then it'll be kind of like a waste of time. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if I have any other examples, uh, that are readily available. Uh, and then past that, that's value and the basics of elements and principles of design.